Beside me here is the Muck Drummer 5.0 in their limited edition light green, and back there is the limited edition yellow. I spent well over 200 days camping in the drama over the past few years and I get a lot of questions about it since it's a very unique design. So let's go over the top questions rapid fire style. Most people still choose to camp in a tent, so first of all, why camp in a hammock at all? With a hammock you don't need flat, clear or dry ground when you set up. You do need trees however, so probably don't take one to the desert, the arctic or where there's been a forest fire. But more often than not, I find it much easier to find a good spot for the hammock than it is to find a good tent pad. In the hammock you're up away from ants and crawling insects, snakes, spiders, and you don't have to worry about pooling in heavy rain. If it is raining, you get to look out from under your tarp instead of staring at the inside of the fly of a tent. And in my opinion, the drama is the most comfortable way to sleep out here in the bush, and you can set it up in incredible spots like this one. So first question about the drama, how do I get into it? Obviously you can't sit on either end directly or you'll turn it into a teeter-totter. I like to stand right here, grab one center strap, grab the other center strap, and grabbing those just tells you where the middle is and your butt will just kind of fall into place. Next, can you sleep on your side? Absolutely. Couldn't be more comfortable. I'm mainly a side sleeper, a bit on my back and uh, just lying here, I don't even want to get up. Next, is it hard on your back? Not at all. The drummer is absolutely flat sleeping. So the sleeping pad that's in here, it goes perpendicular to the ridge line and with some amazing engineering they've made it very flat so it's not like a, a banana where your, your feet are up here and your head's up here like in a traditional gathered in hammock you can flatten out uh, gathered in hammocks too a bit but this is truly flat sleeping and for me sleeping in the hammock really reduces pressure points as opposed to sleeping on a sleeping pad on the hard ground can you move easily when you're in it without tipping it yes absolutely like, I can move all around, I can lift up my feet, as long as my butt is planted more or less in the middle, it won't be a problem, I can come forward. If you sit right at the end, of course it's gonna teeter-totter, but that's so, it's so easily avoided. How do you keep bugs out? There's a bug net, integrated bug net right here. Just pull it out and zip it around. And inside of here, there's a little string that is attached to the ridge line, and it's got a clip on it and you just clip it to the uh, where your head is there's a little thing for it and that keeps the bug net off your head next how do i get into the sleeping bag i just put my feet in the end lift up my body slide the hammock under and zip it up the drummer offers something called chair mode what is that just pull the two straps here to bring up your head it gives you a backrest and then pulling these two straps here will allow the pad to bend here and give you like a bend for your legs. It's like a chair. It's so comfortable for reading. Next question, is it strong? Is it durable? Yes, it's very strong. I've never had an issue with that. This thin bit of nylon, ripstop nylon, is very tough. It's also reinforced at the foot end and the stitching is really well done. Coming over to Aaron's hammock now where I've got the tarp set up. This yellow is really beautiful it, it kind of reminds me of a yellow canoe and if you're a canoeist you know how beautiful a yellow canoe looks in the woods this is the same next question is can the drummer endure a storm it doesn't have walls so you would think that rain could blow under it well you can easily adapt for that first of all put the foot end into your exposure or into the wind because the foot end of the tarp is designed to be a little bit longer which means it'll give you a bit more coverage and then simply bring this end of the tarp down, pitch it really low, close to the, tarp, the hammock, and that'll give you good coverage from rain, even driving rain. Next question, is the pole set really necessary or can I just use a stick? You can use green sticks with a bit of flex to them. You don't want to use dry, dead, brittle sticks. But this pole set, it doesn't cost much and it's just so perfectly designed for this purpose. Just slides into the two holes there. A stick can also slide into the holes, but for the cost, the meager, meager cost, I would definitely buy the pole set. It just does the job so perfectly. Also, if you're in a designated park or depending on where you live, you may not be able to harvest green twigs even. So that may not be allowed. One more reason to buy the pole set. You can even use nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. And just let the hammock sit like that. But if you do up the bug net, you'll want it elevated off of you. Otherwise, the bug net will be pretty much sitting on you. So that's the purpose of a pole or stick. Next, why does the tarp come with a little tube of seam sealant? There's a seam here along the middle of the tarp, and when you get the tarp, it's a good idea to apply that seam sealant along the outside of the tarp. This is actually commonplace with tarps that use silicone. The factory would need to stretch out the tarps and let the seam sealant dry for hours, and it would be very expensive to manufacture. So instead, to keep the price lower, they keep a small bottle in the package. It's truly an easy job to seam seal, squeeze some out of the tube, brush it on, and let it dry. That's it.
Next question, where can you buy them? People are often looking for them in retailers. The only place you can buy them is direct from a muck on their website. Next one, is it light enough for backpackers? This is the 5.0, the regular version of the Drommer, and Amok released an ultralight series last year of the pad, tarp, and Drommer, uh, which is great if you're counting grams if you're a backpacker. If you live in a cold climate, you might wonder if you can use this winter camping. Yes, definitely can, but you'd want to get the winter light pad, which has an R value of 5, rated down to 0 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 18 degrees Celsius, which I have used it down to any colder than that, and I'd rather be in the hot tent. That's just my personal choice, but yeah, you can definitely camp down to those temperatures. A lot of people already own a sleeping mat and they wonder if they can use it in the drummer. You may be able to for the regular size drummer. It uses a L an LW pad, long wide, that's an industry standard size. If it says LW, you may be able to, but it has to have vertical baffles that run the length. If they run horizontally, it's not going to work. In the drummer XL, you do have to get a MUX pad, the Fuel XL. It's a custom size for the XL drummer and that's the only one that'll work in it. On a similar note, you may wonder if you can use your existing tarp, and you may be able to. The Schuld 10 runs three meters along the ridge line, tree to tree, and then 3.8 meters from head to toe. So if you have that amount of coverage on your tarp, then it may work, but uh, only, you can, only you can decide that. Next question, should you go with a regular size drummer or the XL? I'm 6'4", almost 200 pounds. I can tell you for sure I need the XL. If you're over 5'10 or 180 centimeters, then you're going to want to go with the XL. Otherwise, your feet are going to be up against the end box, the foot box. You just don't want to skimp on size. So if in doubt, go with the XL. Next, should you go with the regular 5.0 or the ultralight? If you are a backpacker, you'll probably want to go for the weight savings and shell out that extra dough for the ultralight. It's also see-through-ish. You can, you can kind of see through the fabric, which is pretty trippy, and air flows through it really nicely. So if, it's, if you're in a hot environment, you may want that breeze coming through, and that's nice as well. Next, how does the pad come in and out? Well, if you're taking it out, there's a little hole here that exposes the air valve, which is just a brilliant little design feature. Pull, it, pull the tab and then push out. There's a little pull tab there. I would push it out rather than yank it from behind and push all that air out while you're in it. Let your body weight do the work instead of crushing it and trying to squeeze it all out. And then the pad comes in and out through this zippered closure here. It just slides in, slides out. And last but not least, people ask, isn't this just like sleeping in a bear burrito? Well, I thought the same at one point in my life. I was car camping in Algonquin, a big park in Canada, and a couple of guys there were telling me they were sleeping in their hammocks that night. I was literally car camping as in sleeping in my minivan, and even that, at that point in time in my camping life, that kind of freaked me out. You know, I, I, I pictured bears breaking into my minivan, these guys are sleeping in hammocks. It seemed, like, it seemed like madness. There's no difference between sleeping in this and a tent. A little thin sheet of nylon for your tent wall is, is no protection. It's just maybe more mental protection, but no, there's no difference. I've never had an issue. If you camp where there are bears, just be bear safe. That's all you can do. If you're looking for any more information on a muck, I put out a video last year comparing the 5.0 to the ultralight to their traditional gathered end hammock, the Segel. Also did a little series on how to winter camp in a hammock in the drummer. And Amok has a great channel as well where they have lots more information, how, how to use the hammock properly, instructional videos, sprinkled uh, with some Norwegian humor. It's great, you'll love it. Go check out their channel too. So Amok is also sponsoring a giveaway on this video and they'll be providing one lucky winner with a complete set of this. Unlike a lot of giveaways, Amok is not asking you to jump through hoops and neither am I. All you have to do to enter is comment on this video. That's it. The complete rules for entering are in the description below. Be sure to read them. But a couple things I want to mention. Replies to comments don't count, so be sure to leave your own comment. And duplicate comments don't count either. Make it a new comment and only one. Any extras just won't, won't give you any extra draws. And to select a winner, it'll, we'll be using a, a randomized comment picker website. And that will filter out duplicates and replies. So yeah, just one comment, one new comment. That's all you have to do to enter. Also, a muck can only ship to certain countries, which is most, but if you win, you'll have to provide a valid address within one of those countries, so be sure that, that you can do that. Also, be sure to look for the draw video in the very near future on this channel. We, we aren't collecting anyone's personal information, so you have to look at the draw video in order to know that you've won. And if no one claims it within a certain period, which is listed in the rules below, then it'll be redrawn and the new winner will be picked. So don't let that happen to you. Good luck. Can't wait to give one of these away to someone. 
and as I say to Muck, stay wild.